Hey, everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. I should not try to sing at my intros anymore because it's going to make people not want to watch the video because I'm such a horrible singer. Anyway, hey, everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we captured the almighty Reggie Steel, completing our trio of legendary golems. And in this episode, I'm going to be going after a few things that I haven't shown yet. First of all, I did not know about this. You can use Surf here and get a Max Revive. Yeah, really useful here in Petalburg City. Plus, in this water, there is a Pokemon that we can find if we fish here with the good, at least the good rod. And I haven't been in this area with the good rod, so I haven't been able to show this off. And that Pokemon is Corefish. I'll explain this as we're going to where we actually have to go in this episode. Corefish is pretty much your standard water type. It's kind of defensive. It evolves kind of late, unfortunately, into Crawdont, who is... A water dark type that's in an even worse position than Absol. It has two types that are good for special attacking, but unfortunately... Or it has two types that are good for special attacking, but unfortunately, it has really strong physical attack. It just doesn't have moves to back up what it's supposed to do. Or it, it doesn't have moves to back up what it's supposed to do because physical dark and physical water moves did not yet exist and don't until Diamond and Pearl. So, again... Unfortunate case of something that could have been. Plus, on top of that, its speed is just abysmal, where at least Absol had salvageable speed. So, really, really sucks to be Crawdont, but... Anyway, in this episode, uh, you know, should I sell some of my items? I think my items might be kind of full. Yeah, actually, you know what? I will. I'm going to go deposit some items into the PC and maybe sell a few. Okay, I went ahead and deposited pretty much any hold items that I'm not going to use, as well as a few other items for evolution. So, how about, now that we're done with all this, we're going to finally progress the story! Woohoo! Took four episodes of fighting legendary Pokemon, and we have a trainer battle right here. What do you know? I'm in a good mood. How about we show this battle for all time's sake, because I'm feeling it. Yeah, okay, so... I guess while we're showing this battle, I can talk about something that I've gotten a lot of comments about, something I didn't know. Now, keep in mind that I record these videos in advance, so a lot of the time, if tips are given to me, I can use them uh, if it's not recorded too far in advance, but there's sometimes where tips just aren't useful because of how far in advance these videos are recorded. I've, been, I've already played sections of the game before tips have been given to me. And this is one of those examples. A lot of people told me that the Braille is not as cryptic as it seems. It does not require you to buy a strategy guide because it's actually in the instruction booklet that comes with the game. Now, I don't remember it being in the American version. It might be. Uh, most of the comments that I've seen say that they're in Europe and that they had that in the instruction booklet. But the thing is, I have never once looked inside of an instruction booklet that came with the game. It's always just been basic controls or things like that that are just so painfully obvious. And they never actually offer helpful tips. Yet the one time that it actually does offer a helpful tip, it's something that's pretty much required. But that doesn't change the fact that it's cryptic because who seriously looks inside of those books without, you know, something on the internet telling them to? And on top of that, there's nothing in the game that tells you that that instruction booklet actually has what you need to translate that text. So, I still say it's cryptic. It might not be quite as bad as I was saying because I just wasn't aware of it, but it still is pretty dang bad. Is what I'm saying. I mean, if this was like NES era, then maybe that'd be acceptable, but for Game Boy Advance era when this game was released in 2005 and the originals were released in 2003, I just don't really see that as being fair game design for the time, and I don't have a Pokemon with Dive. Okay, so for those of you that were yelling at your screen telling me, BRING A POKEMON WITH DIVE! Yeah, I completely forgot, even though it's one of my own tips, but anyway. Uh... One of my uh, tips that I have for this area here, let's see here, this is the submarine that Team Aqua stole in Slave Port. Team Aqua must have got a show here, okay. So this is where we actually have to go to progress the story. So, as you see, I have Relicanth in my party. If you've been following along and you caught the Relicanth that I told you to, it not only has the purpose of finding Regirock, Regiice, and Registeel, but it can learn both Dive and Rock Smash. So if you don't want to have, you know, two HM Slaves on you, because Dive and Rock Smash are kind of a hard-to-come-by combination on HM Slaves, that can be good. I also have Strength in my party, normally, because I believe Strength is actually a pretty good move. And I don't know if there's wild Pokemon here, I would assume so. Maybe I should just wander around without a Repel and see if there are for sure or not, because, well, I haven't looked at the sidebar for this area quite yet. And let's go ahead and push this boulder here. Now, this area is a jerk. You need Surf, Dive, Rock Smash, and Strength to get through here. 
Yeah, they are jerks with this area. I can't believe that they did that. I'm uh, gonna throw Altair out front. I left Kappa behind in favor of the HM Slave because Pandora hasn't been seeing much action. Neither has Altair, so I kind of just got rid of that. Plus, I need Altair to fly back anyway, so. Alright, so, Team Aqua Grunt right here. Poochiena! I like we haven't seen enough of these already. So, I guess while you're diving underwater and just going around all over the place, you kind of have to wonder. I've always thought this. What happens when you use a repel underwater? I mean, what, are you just like oil spilling it up down there? I've always wondered that. Just using repels underwater, it works, but how does it go? Dragon Dance! Wow! Um, yeah, I want to learn that. I'll get rid of Sing for that. Dragon Dance is a really good move. Raises your attack and speed together at the same time. From doing that, you can just utterly sweep. Downside is the dragon is a special move in this game, so it's not quite as good as it is in, say, Diamond and Pearl when they did the physical special split. But it's still a good move that I want to learn, because speed is always good to have. And wow! Um, jerkish. Now, I can't go down there to that cavern, because if we push that strength boulder down there, it won't be able to come back up. So let's push this one up. So glass isn't black and white where the boulders take up four spaces. That would just be so jerkish of them to do that. And I'm saying jerkish a lot. So here we have these currents. For any of you that have played Pokemon games before, you just love these auto-moving tiles. You know, Team Rocket's base had them. Team Aqua's base is like similar here. So you just ride the currents around, and I think you want to go this way. Yes, it looks like. Okay, good. Got that on my first try. I think you have to go to the middle one at some point, but for now, I'm just going to explore around and... How about... How about we... Do something. I don't know. Um, push these up. Push this to the side. And yay, I can skip you! I might come back and fight these guys off screen just because we can't... Whoa! I forgot about this room. If I recall, this room sucks. Like, really sucks. Trying to remember how exactly to do this room. Okay, I got it. I think. Crap, did I screw it up already? Yeah, I did. Crap. Okay, that took a lot longer than I was hoping it would. So, after getting through here, look what we got here. TM26 Earthquake. One of the absolute best TMs in the entire game. Now, I'm thinking of using this on Blaziken. I've had a lot of you guys say that maybe I should have kept Dig because I really don't use bulk up that much, and after Flannery, yeah, I haven't had much of use for in single player. Granted, in multiplayer, bulk up is really useful. But, I would do this. Now, the thing is, Earthquake TMs are hard to come by, so if you're planning on doing multiplayer stuff after this, or planning on trying to raise a competitive team, I would not recommend using this Earthquake TM on a single-player team. But because this is just covering single-player aspects, why not? I will use it. So, I'll go ahead and get rid of Bulk Up, and I will do that. Rock Tomb is still useful because I want to have at least something to attack flying types with, should the situation arise where I get stuck fighting a flying type, so that way I'm not just a sitting duck. But, hey. So, heading down here, look what we got. Hold it right there! Foo, so it was you after all. Behold! See how beautiful it is? The sleeping form of the ancient Pokemon Kyogre. I have waited so long for this day to come. It surprises me how you managed to chase me here, but that's all over now. The realization of my dream. You must disappear. Now! Here we go! Archie! Who we are finally getting to fight and fighting Maxay twice. So, Archie is going to start out with a Mighty Anna level 41 with the moves Roar, Swagger, Scary Face, and Take Down. This is... Give or take, you fought one of these when you were fighting uh, Steven earlier, but, you know, it's a single battle, so I guess you're fighting it more one-on-one -on -one now. And it's doing Swagger, which I appreciate, because that means that if I should not attack myself in Confusion, I could probably just destroy it with Takedown. 
Could probably use a person berry, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go for straight for the takedown, going right for the throat. Come on! Pay off! That's not paying off. That's paying in spades. I don't know. So. Feels kind of weird to finally be fighting Archie, because I swear, in Emerald, it takes so long to actually get to Archie. It's nuts. You fight Maxi, like... And in, in general, you just see Maxi a lot more, too. And Stop attacking yourself, please. Thank you. So after two turns of attacking yourself, that means that, yeah, okay, it would have been better to use the person berry, but oh well, I'm probably going to take myself down with it. Oh, wow! Um, one extra stage of attack after the Intimidate still wasn't enough to bring it down. How about... Moagami. No Intimidate in effect because it's later in the battle and I can just use a fighting type move to be sure I finish it off. Not that I think I wouldn't finish it off, but he might use an item. Indeed he does! So I was right to do this! Not gonna heal him completely, but hey. Double kick. I think I only need one kick. What? How much defense does this thing have? I don't remember Mighty Enna being that good in the way of defense. Maybe it is kind of decent in the way of defense. The ultimate tank, Mighty Enna. Who would have thought? So, now he's going to be sending out Crobat. I'm going to go with... Oh, why not? I'll go with Teddy. Crobat is level 41 with the moves Confuse Ray, Bite, Wing Attack, and Air Cutter. So let's go ahead and use Hyper Beam, like you didn't see that coming. And yes, very good. Now I'm aware that I skipped a lot of trainers in here. There is a fight against Shelly, should you want to actually fight her, but it's not really much of anything special. She just has a Sharpedo and a Mighty Enna that are weaker versions of uh, Archie's. To be fair, I probably should have shown that fight, but there's really just the Earthquake TM and the fight with Archie here that are worth your time. So, here we go, Sharpedo. Level 30, well, 43 with the moves Screech, Slash, Taunt, and Swagger. And it's just saw just a Swagger there. Now, I really hope that I get to use my Hyper Beam now because, my God, two stages of attack on top of 160 base attack. Come on. No! Why am I having such bad luck with Confusion all of a sudden? Seriously. And, oh, that, that hurts. I'm loafing around... Oh, no. 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 Teddy. Oh, yes! Good! If I miss there, I swear to God. I, I, I just love how powerful that move is, and Teddy just has the most nonchalant look on his face while using it. There we go. I fired my laser. And there we go. What? I lost to a mere child like you? <laughs> I commend you. I must recognize that you are truly gifted. But, I have this in my possession. With this red orb, I can make Kyogre! Red orb suddenly began shining by itself. What? I didn't do anything. Why did the red orb... Where did Kyogre go? Hmm, it's a message from our members outside. Yes, what is it? Mm, it's raining heavily. Good, that should have happened. That is why we awakened Kyogre, to realize Team Aqua's vision of expanding the sea. What? It's raining harder than we envisioned? You're in danger? That can't be. That's just not possible. Hold your position and monitor the situation. There's something wrong. That red orb is supposed to awaken and control Kyogre. But why? Why did Kyogre disappear? Why? Alright, I get to do the voice. What have you wrought? Archie, you finally awoken Kyogre, haven't you? What will happen to the world if the downpour continues for all eternity? The world's land masses will drown in the deepening sea. Well, what? Don't get all high and mighty with me. Wasn't it you, Team Magma, that infuriated Groudon? As long as I have this red orb, I should be able to control Kyogre. I should be able to control it. We don't have time to argue about it here. Let Get outside and see for yourself. See if what you've wrought is what the world that we desired. Emil, come on! You have to get out of here too! What happened? What is this wretched scene? Did I make a horrible mistake? I, I only wanted... Do you understand now, Archie? 
Did you finally see how disastrous your dream turned out to be? We have to hurry. We have to do something before the situation goes completely out of control. Emil, don't say anything. I'm a silent protagonist anyway, Maxie. I know I have no right to be critical of Archie, but the way things are now, I doubt that we humans will be capable of doing anything about it. But neither can we stand by and just watch helplessly. The responsibility for putting an end to this falls to Archie and me. This defies belief. You super ancient Pokemon. Their power is unbelievable. They've upset the balance of nature. Emil, what is happening? This is terrible. How come you can use fly to get here? After the scorching heat wave ended, its deluge began. It doesn't happen. All of Hoenn know the whole world will drown. This is a huge rain cloud is spreading from above Sutopolis. What in the world is taking place there? There's no point in arguing. Sutopolis might provide answers. Emil, I don't know what you intend to do, but don't do anything reckless. Okay, I'm going to Sutopolis. With that. The legendary Pokemon Kyogre and Groudon have both been awakened. So, we're going to follow Steven's instructions and head to Sutopolis City in the next episode. See you guys then.